Hey, what's up, nerds? Paul at Radio Free Hammer Hall, and we're continuing on today with our analysis of Caradron Overlords, and today we're looking at our mainline troops to uh, make those comparisons and see which ones are more valuable to us. So here's my general methodology that I was using to calculate all of this. Kind of started with the standard formula, uh, you know, just attacks by odds to hit times odds to wound. Um, then just assuming that there's a four up save that we're attacking against. And that is really primarily to account for rend and give us a realistic idea of how much damage is actually going to be done. Uh, and then that multiplied by whatever the damage characteristic is. And then a D6 damage we count as 3.5, which is the average on the D6, and D3 as 2, because that's the average on a D3. Um, I basically calculated out each weapon and then figured out the optimized loadout for that particular unit, which combination of weapons is going to put out the most damage then recalculated that for just weapons that are greater than 9 inches in range, and then greater than 12 inches in range as well, to give us an idea of uh, what they can do at longer range, as well as what they can do if you just drop in from a fly high just outside of 9 inches away. So all of those 9-inch guns wouldn't be useful to you if you are coming in through fly high and then in order to get like an apples to apples comparison uh i then divide that out by the total number of points for that unit so that give us us a damage per point calculation and we can use that to compare units against each other that are not uh the same cost so let's get into the units. This is all a little bit complicated because all of these have a bunch of different weapons options. So this is our Endron Riggers. We have our base Endron Rigger, which is a guy with a saw and rapid fire rivet gun. So we can take three of those if we so choose. One of those can be replaced with an ethermatic volley gun, and then a second can be replaced by either a sky hook or a drill launcher. All of those special weapons, other than the rivet gun, are all 24 inches, and the rivet gun is 12 inches. And we can see here going out to the damage output of these that our ethermatic volley gun is our most damaging weapon that we have available and then the choice then would be between skyhook and drill launcher and the skyhook is giving us greater average damage output uh, and then the rapid fire rivet gun is still doing some damage uh, but not a tremendous amount of damage so we're always going to be forced to take one of those. But uh, you can see that you definitely want to, if you're optimizing for shooting, you definitely want to take a volley gun and a sky hook and then a rivet gun. And dividing all of that out, we come to 0 0.025 for our optimal loadout uh, per point. And all we lose at 12, greater than 12 inches is the rivet gun. So we stay at a pretty healthy number. If you've seen the Sky Vessel video, um, even at 12 inches, we're greater than like the total firepower of a gun hauler at, you know, a two thirds of the cost. So that is definitely pretty strong. Out of the same kit, we can build sky wardens and our only difference here on weapons loadout is that instead of 
saws and uh, rapid fire rivet guns. We have sky pikes and vulcanizer pistols. The vulcanizer pistols are strictly worse than the rapid fire rivet guns. Uh, overall, the stats are worse and our damage output is worse. Our volley gun, skyhook, and drill launcher are exactly the same. So our only difference is that third guy with uh, the vulcanizer pistol or the um, or and the sky pike versus a saw and a rivet gun. So as we'll discuss later, overall you're better off going with Endrin riggers right now because the two units are the same cost. So sky wardens are almost strictly worse. Um, even their melee profile is worse. Like if you go all uh, sky pikes versus all saws, uh, you're going to be doing more damage with all saws. So, moving right along, the most complicated war scroll out of everything we have, uh, we've got our ether shot rifles, uh, which we are our default for each model. Our double-barreled ether shot rifle, which is the same thing, just doing twice as many attacks that goes on the unit champion. Then we can replace one of the rifles with the etheric fumigator. Uh, that's a 9-inch range weapon. Our deck sweeper, ether cannon, and grunstock mortars, which are all 12-inch weapons. So, overall, all of our special weapons are going to be more damaging than our basic ether shot rifles. However, we have this big trade-off between the range of these weapons and the damage output. So our strongest weapon other than the double-barreled rifle is our etheric fumigator, which is a 9-inch range weapon. And then the rest of those special weapons are all about the same uh, damage output, almost exactly the same damage output, and they're at 12 inches each. So it's a really big uh, trade-off that you have here. Is you're getting a big difference in utility if you're taking rifles versus taking the special weapons. And you can see that the power goes down pretty considerably on this, although comparatively within uh, the Karadran Overlord's book, the even our all-rifle version is still a pretty powerful unit. It's one of your most powerful shooting units available. And of course, on these guys, like their melee sucks. <laughs> They're just uh, pistol whipping people, so it's not going to get you very far. They're really all about shooting. So, moving on to our last unit, we've got our Arcanaut Company. Uh, by default, all of our guys have privateer pistols. We can have one guy with an ethermatic volley gun, one with a light sky hook. And then our champion has either the Ether Flare pistol or the Volley pistol. Once again, all of our special weapons are going to be uh, more damaging than our uh, standard weapon. And in this case, they're also longer range. Out of the Ether Flare pistol or the Volley pistol, the Volley pistol is doing a little bit more damage than uh, the ether flare pistol so the volley pistol is going to be your choice there it's basically strictly better um, our light sky hook and our ethermatic volley gun are definitely your stronger choices here um, but they're only 12 inches and 18 inches respectively so there's definitely a challenge here so when you look at these this unit is really deceptive because if you just look at the damage output and just cover up the ranges for a second, you would say, holy crap, why don't I take just all Arcanaut Company? Clearly these things are just so powerful. 
But then we start taking into account range, and most of that power just drops right off as soon as you're outside of nine inches. And that nine inch uh, boundary is really important because that's uh, how far away you can redeploy when you fly high with a ship, which is going to be your main delivery system for your ground troops because these guys only move four inches. So it's going to be tough to get these guys in range if you do a fly high move. You're going to end up uh, needing another turn most of the time. And in a moment, we'll talk about more of the detail of that. But you can see here that their optimal damage output, if you get everything, you know, if you have a target within nine inches of this unit, they're putting out some pretty heavy damage. You know, if they're almost uh, twice as efficient as like an ironclad. But, but their range just sucks. Sucks really, really bad. You, when you get to greater than nine inches, you go to just the volley gun and skyhook, and then greater than 12 inches, all you've got is the skyhook. So really not that exciting at all. So here's our basic comparison of the shooting output of each of these units. So you'll see here that under optimal conditions, our Arcanaut company being able to get all their weapons in are your strongest shooting unit, followed up by the Grunstock Thunderers. Then your engine riggers come in third after that, and your sky wardens are a clear last place. Uh, as I've mentioned already, engine riggers are almost strictly better than sky wardens. On numbers, they're better than sky wardens. On uh, special abilities, that's the only spot where I would say it's hard to actually say which one is strictly better because they have two different special abilities. I think the Endron Rigger ability to heal ships is probably going to be more useful most of the time, but that doesn't necessarily always make them more valuable. So that's really kind of the only exception to, you know, the Endron Rigger strictly better uh, argument. And their melee profiles are also better. So if you're using them just as melee troops, you want Endron Riggers with saws, not Sky Wardens with Sky Pikes. Now, on Thunderers, this is an interesting question. Because I have seen competitive lists that are running the special weapons. I've also seen competitive lists running rifles. And there is definitely argument for both. With having um, units that are, I'm sorry, models that can shoot at least 12 inches, you know, that would be our second greater than 9 inch column. You know, we're knocking off one of our guns, but not uh, all of our special weapons. You know, that loadout it lets you maximize, you know, all of your models shooting It when you're greater than 9 inches away. But it does have that 12-inch restriction, that the majority of your shooting is coming out at 12 inches. So if you are, you know, for whatever reason, which is going to be very common uh, of a situation to have where you're more than 12 inches away from the enemy, um, you're going to dramatically drop your firepower down if you're not using all rifles. So all rifles gets you less power all the time, but you're able to project that power further across the board. And alternatively, you're also able to keep your ships further back so that they're more protected. It's harder for your opponent to come after you uh, and attack your ship if they're 18 inches away as opposed to being 12 inches away. You know, 12 inches is an easy amount of ground to cover between a move and then a charge. 
Uh, 18 is a much different story. Not a lot of things can get across uh, an 18 inch gap, um, you know, in one move. So it's, it's really sort of a toss up, a preference thing. Uh, personally, I'm going to be going with all rifles because I like the utility at, uh, and the more conservative play of having longer range with those. But I certainly would not criticize anybody for, uh, you know, taking special weapons either. Arcanaut Company, I feel like these are like the, the big trap in the book. And I kind of go back and forth on them a little bit myself because I just know the effectiveness of having a cheap unit with a four up save that can sit on objectives for you. So in that regard, I think they're pretty good. They also come in lots of 10, so they're always getting ether gold, which is great for rerolling saves for them to uh, prevent your opponent from taking those objectives from you. Their optimal shooting profile looks like they would be a very potent offensive unit. The problem is actually delivering that firepower, because most of that's at a 9-inch range. So, one of the things that you could do is run them in Zilfin and have the buoyancy aid on a uh, an ironclad use your once per game hero phase movement to move up the ironclad then move it up a second time during the movement phase that should get all of your guns within range of the enemy and you can open fire the problem is is that's going to leave your ironclad really close to the enemy and because you're not using fly high, you can't also drag all of your entrance riggers along with you when you make that move. So your riggers are going to be left you know, without being able to get all of their firepower in. The other option is to use the Iron Sky Attack Squadron, which lets you unload Arcanaut Company off of your frigates. Um, after movement so you could make a fly high move and then drop the Arcanaut company out and drop them out in such a way that they are now less than nine inches away so they can get their weapons in so that is an option that's out there available to you however that then puts all of your Arcanauts at risk they're not safely inside a ship anymore so now they're going to be just charged by the enemy because they're very close to the enemy they barely need to move to get into you so you really have to bank on that arcanaut company clearing out whatever they're in front of and you you aren't necessarily going to be doing that you know um, a unit of 20 arcanaut company or rather uh, uh two units of 10 arcanaut company is kind of unwieldy to try and get all of that in front of your opponent to get everything into range so i think it's it's a possibility but i i personally don't really like it i think it's kind of like a trap so to speak you're probably going to be better off loading up ironclads with thunderers and just firing away after you uh fly high um and that gives you more flexibility as well. You don't necessarily have to take Zilfin to get the extra hero phase move out of that. Um, you can just utilize Fly High more. It gets your engine riggers into position. So I th think, in general, I think the majority of my troops in my forces are going to be mostly engine riggers and thunderers. I'll probably have a couple of units, maybe like one or two units of Arcanaut Company, and not intend on putting them in ships, but have them be, uh, you know, units intended to babysit objectives. That's kind of the play that I'm going with on those. 
So that is it for now. Um, I realized as I started recording this video that there is another unit that I did not take into account here, and that is uh, Thundrix Privateers. Um, and I'll have to do another quick video on just them as well, because they're another kind of weird corner case kind of unit, uh, because there's they're part hero and part unit, and they're unique and it, it's just different and you're you're fixed on the model count you can't take multiple lots of them so it is interesting i'll have to do another video that takes a look at those but anyway that is it for now don't forget to like and subscribe for more and i'll talk to you all later